Welcome to Python, the next generation, or as fans fondly refer to it, PTNG. Hi everyone, I'm Meg Ray, and you can find me at, at teach underscore Python on Twitter. So I started out as a special education teacher and my experience learning to program for the first time at a local Python meetup was the impetus to shift gears in my career into computer science education. So now I teach computer science education, I research computer science education, um, I'm an author, instructional designer, and educator. I will be available in the chat for the whole presentation, so please feel free to put any questions there. So today I'm going to go over some of the current trends in Python education efforts. You'll be introduced to the brand new Python in Education website, gain a few strategies and resources for teaching, and connect with a whole community of Python educators. So let's start with what's happening now uh, in education. So let's take a look at some trends in general computer science education that are influencing um, how Python is used in education. So the first is the increase in computer science for all initiatives. Now this can happen on a national level, um, or if you're somewhere like the US, it could be happening on a state and more local level. Um, but what these initiatives are um, is a requirement that every student receive computer science instruction, whether that's dedicated um, a dedicated class or uh, whether it's integrated into another subject area, uh, but that every student receive this instruction during the regular school day. Um, and so this is a shift towards equity because uh, it ensures that it's not just an elective where students can opt in or they have to choose between computer science and something else, um, but rather that every student receives a baseline of exposure and understanding to the field of computer science. Um, and then the other trend um, is that there are shifts in computer science 100 classes or intro to computer science at the college and university level. Um, so just briefly, there's an increase in CS for non-majors courses, and some universities are even starting to require CS as a general graduation requirement. And then there's also some shifts and rethinking in uh, intro to CS for majors at some universities as well. So in both of these cases, Python is, is being used itself as a tool for equity. And what I mean by that is that selecting Python as the programming language to introduce computer science is a deliberate choice to support equity for all learners. So let's take a look at why that is. So this trope might make you groan the whole Python is the same thing as pseudocode thing. And we could get into a nuanced discussion about that, but instead I just wanna focus on how this feature um, is actually a strength of Python and the driving force behind Python's popularity in education. And it is popular. As a matter of fact, I had a teacher make a comment to me once about how establishment Python is because it's just so ubiquitous um, in the secondary education space. So let's take a closer look at why this is the case. The first piece uh, that we've been talking about is readability. So we know that reading and tracing code contributes to students' understanding of programming. Um, and Python is very readable for students and teachers. Uh, there's also a lot of availability of educational resources that are out there uh, online for teachers to find. Python is flexible. Students can create um, projects from different domains. Um, teachers can use different um, programming paradigms. So it, there's a lot of flexibility in its use. Um, also, because it is popular in industry, uh, used in industry, especially data science, students are very drawn to that. They want practical skills. They want to feel like they're doing something real, which they are. Um, 
and, and teachers are also drawn to that because they feel like they're giving their students valuable skill. Um, next, it is highly compatible with another trend in education, which uh, is data literacy and trying to push data literacy. Um, so uh, teachers can teach programming uh, with Python at the same time as they're increasing data literacy. Um, and finally, there is a really strong and active community around Python. Now, that is uh, part of the reason that so many educational resources are available, um, but it's also something that in the education world, it's, it's not really, uh, it's sort of below the surface. People aren't aware of it. So we're getting a huge influx of Python users um, and they're coming from all different places in education. First, we're getting students who are required to learn Python in school, right? So a whole bunch of secondary school students or sixth to 12th grade. Also teachers. So this isn't just computer science teachers, but we need computer science teachers so quickly that we don't have time to wait for new CS teachers to come up through the pre-service pipeline. And a lot of times there's not even a pathway to train those teachers from pre-service. Um, so many teachers of other subject areas are learning uh, to program in Python. Um, also, because of all this, after school programs, camps, things like that are, of course, increasingly more popular uh, for programming. So we're getting students from that. We talked about the trends at the college university level. So getting people from all different majors now uh, for that. And then because of all this, all, all of these things are driving the production of a lot of online education resources, um, which is increasing the likelihood that an independent learner is going to come across uh, Python materials online. So these are some of the areas and this new generation of Python users is more diverse in every sense of the word than ever before. Um, and as a community, we are also becoming more diverse, but I would say that even the attendance of PyCon US 2021 um, does not reflect the same demographics as this new generation of Python users. So as a community, we have many opportunities now and in the near future to engage this next generation. Um, and we want to move them from, yeah, I programmed in Python once to active and contributing members of the Python user community. So considering everything that we've talked about, about this next generation of Python users, um, as a community, we have to think about how will we connect them? Um, how will we widen our circle? How will we welcome and engage this next generation? So I think that will require some community discussions and community thinking around what we want to stop doing as a community, what we want to start doing as a community, and what we should continue to do as a community. Um, and really examining what parts of our culture are essential to this community and we should help onboard people to and which parts are not as essential that we may want to dispense with going forward. Um, so there's a lot of thinking and working out um, and working together to be done here. All right, so let's move on to within the Python community, what are the education uh, related things that are happening? So let's take a look at a few of these current efforts. The first is PyCon US always has the, an education summit and training summit. Other PyCons may have that as well. So for example, PyCon UK has an education track that runs th throughout the conference. Um, the PSF is also supporting um, some educational programs. 
So for example, in 2019, they gave out education grants. And this year they supported the Hidden Genius Project um, in incorporating Python into their curriculum. And then there are many, many open source projects related to education. Uh, so just to name a few, there's Beware, which um, received one of the 2019 education grants. There's EduBlocks, which helps students transition from block-based coding to Python. And there's PPB, which is an educational game development engine. Um, and then we have some other projects which within the community, uh, for example, the Teaching Python podcast. And I am excited to announce a project that I've been working on, which is a new landing page for Python in education. Before we get into the page, I want to just acknowledge what a community effort this has been. Uh, first, this was funded by the PSF through a 2019 education grant. Also, Nick Tollervy encouraged me to submit the proposal for the grant and also passed on the work that he and other contributors did to the original Python and Education page a few years ago. I also want to thank Sumana Hariharaswara. Um, Sumana reminded me at a really vital point um, that I had community around me and was not alone. Finally, I want to thank Shana Gordon McKeon. Uh, Shana is the one who developed the site. So you can find it at education.python.org. Um, and I'll give a tour in just a moment, but just an idea of what you can do with this site. Um, one, you can find resources for teaching Python. That's the number one question that I get. What are the resources I can use to teach Python? Well. Your answer is here. <laughs> um, you can also contribute resources that you've created or that you know of. Um, you can learn uh, all sorts of things about teaching Python, including inclusive teaching strategies. Uh, you can connect with others um, who are interested in Python in education. And you can also contribute because this is an ongoing open source project. So let's take a look. So here's the landing page and we have um, several different options in the top menu bar. So if you have a specific problem of practice or you're new to education and aren't sure where to start or even new to Python and not sure where to start, um, this page is full of toolkits and guides for different um, audiences. So one that we'll look at today, what works in teaching Python, that's evidence-based strategies for teaching, um, a toolkit on how to take action to advocate for CS instruction, um, a guide to inclusive practices, and um, a guide to choosing a platform for teaching Python. Then we get to the resources. Now, if you just want to say, fine, I need some lesson plans, you know, I need a curriculum. Uh, this is the place to go. You can uh, search by keyword. Um, you can filter uh, by some of the topics up here and hopefully find what you're looking for. Um, so let's take a look at Python Snacks. So when you go here, you will see um, any information. Uh, I'm signed in, so you won't see edit this resource, uh, but you'll find information about who created this, about uh, what it is, um, and you'll be able to link uh, to go directly to that resource. So here you can also contribute a resource. Uh, these are all either open, open source projects, open education resources, or free resources. Next, you can go to the forum to connect with others. Uh, this is a great place to start. You can 
uh, ask questions of the community, um, and connect with others. Okay, and then you can also find out um, other ways to get involved and connect with other people. So um, through social media and uh, different communities that exist online. You can see some of the uh, tweets happening that are related to Python and education, and then also get information about how to contribute um, to the open source project. And finally, of course, there uh, we abide by the PSF code of conduct. So let's take a deeper dive into a couple of the features. So let's take a sneak peek at one of the at a couple of the toolkits. So these are common questions that I get. Where do I start? Where can I find some fresh ideas? Which resources are actually worth my time? And my students are stuck. What can I do? Well, now you can go to the What Works in Teaching Python Toolkit, or as I like to call it, Pythagogy. Um, so some of the concepts or strategies in the toolkit include something called prim, concept before code, tell the story, sub goal labeling. Let's just look at one of those. So prim, that stands for predict, run, investigate, modify, make. This is a means of planning um, for programming instruction, and it's meant for learners at all different stages in the learning process. So not just novices, but also learners at intermediate and more advanced levels. Um, so in the toolkit, you will get a summary explaining what this is. You'll get a uh, link to resources on how to implement it. And you will also see a Python related example for each one. So the example for this is the new Intro to Python teaching curriculum um, that Repl.it offers. And that was created by Andrew Colley, who you can find on Twitter. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Predict and run. So here you can see he has comments giving instructions. So task one, add a comment on line seven to predict what the code in line eight will do. So I would, as a brand new novice coder, I would make a prediction about what this line of code would do, and then I would run it to see if I'm correct. Next is the investigate phase. So this is a guided investigation where I'm testing out different things about the code. Um, so some of the questions is here, what would the output of the code print, quote, I love computing be? And then, there are examples um, with the syntax slightly different for each. And students uh, investigate and put their answers as comments. Finally, there's the modify and make phases. So modify, you're going to actually reuse that same line of code, um, but change up the string to make it your own. And finally, make, you're going to create your own um, part of the program. So this is just one example of an evidence-based strategy that is featured in this toolkit. So let's take a peek at one of the other toolkits. So this is from the Act Take Action Toolkit. Um, different toolkits have different primary audiences. So this is really a guide for tech companies and professionals. Um, though many different people can benefit from it. So it talks about ways that you can advocate, support, and collaborate um, to advance computer science education at the secondary level. So, uh, and I just want to say that all of the resources are uh, linked and currently available on the website in the toolkit itself. Um, they're just removed here for simplicity. So one of the first actions that you can take is advocating for computer science education at the secondary level. Um, and in the toolkit, it has resources like local policy guides, um, 
or template letters to write a letter to a school principal. Next in the toolkit, you can find resources that companies can use to support computer science education. Um, so things like resources for how to volunteer as a team to run an hour of code event, um, how to promote visibility of different um, developer related careers, um, information about hiring and supporting first time interns, um, and information about donating either devices or software to schools. And finally, uh, resources for individuals to collaborate with educators um, in CS education. So you'll see links to um, organizations where you can volunteer, um, ways to contribute to open source projects. I want to just take a few minutes on these last two. So uh, one, be visible. If you are someone who is part of a group that is underrepresented or not visible in some way in the field of computer science um, or software engineering, I encourage you to consider making yourself visible to students, especially younger students. Um, our young students in primary and secondary school, they need to be able to see themselves um, in this career. And instead of saying, oh, that's for somebody else, that's not for someone like me. Um, so if they can see themselves in you, you know, you may make a big difference in what they choose to study, what they think that they can study, and ultimately their career choices. And finally, find a way to be a mentor at work, whether I'm not talking about mentoring a young person, which is also important. Um, I'm talking about either formally or informally mentoring new colleagues, mentoring people who are new um, to the career, just coming in, um, because it's not only important who we recruit, recruit and hire, but it's important um, to retain people and mentoring uh, can help do that. So I encourage you to check out the site and participate in the community. Um, you can find the site at education.python.org. And if you're interested in contributing, check out the GitHub, uh, which is psf slash python dash in dash edu. And finally, you are all invited to join our mentored sprint, which is Sunday, May 16th from 12 to 4 p.m. Um, and everyone is welcome here. So if you wanna make technical contributions to the website, you are welcome. If you're interested in making content contributions about education, you are welcome. If you've never contributed to anything, please come join us. If you just wanna hang out and talk about education, please come join us. You are welcome here. Um, I will be available this whole time as well as some of my colleagues um, to help mentor anyone who would like it. And I'll just close with this thought. Um, worldwide, we are literally inventing computing education in schools as we go along. So that's a little bit of a scary statement, <laughs> but it's also an awe-inspiring statement because we have this one opportunity to start from the ground up with equity in mind, with inclusion in mind, to really shape what is computing education at the secondary level going to look like. Um, and now is our chance to seize that and influence it. So Thank you for your time today. I would love to hear from you, uh, so feel free to reach out. Thanks.